Hi everyone, welcome back to Brookdale Farm. Well, it's a lovely day here today. It's quite warm and it's also quite humid. Um, and that's gonna give us a perfect day for baling our hay. This has been on the ground now for um, about a week and a half since we cut it. Um, and it was actually ready a few days ago, but I didn't get a chance to come out and bale it then. Okay, to make sure our hay is ready, we want to grab a little bit out of the bottom of the pile and we want to just wind it round three times and it should break in half. That means that it is plenty dry enough now to bale. Now we don't want to bale it in the real heat of the day. We want to wait either, we're going to do it this morning while it's still a bit humid, or we want to wait till evening uh, when it's getting a little bit damp um, and the the moisture is starting to come back in in the air. This just helps the hay not shatter while we are baling it. Now we've got the Massey Ferguson 178 hooked up to our New Holland 317 baler back here. This is a small square baler. Um, these are really good balers. You still pay a reasonable amount of money for them because they just keep working. They're, if you're a small farmer and you're buying a second-hand older baler, check with a few other people in your district who have used them and just get an idea about what they're like for reliability. There are some balers that are just well known that they give you constant trouble all the time. Um, these ones have a pretty good reputation for, for working. The knotters particularly are a complicated piece of engineering um, and can give you major issues. The knotters are this section in the back here with the needles that come up from underneath. So we've got a bit of maintenance to do to this before we go out into the paddock and start baling. So I'm just gonna run through all of that with you now. Okay, so the first piece of maintenance we want to do is we want, this is, in, this is the knotter mechanism here, and each, two knotter mechanisms, one for each line of string, and they've got a knife down in the back there that cuts the string after it has tied the knot. Now we want to take out this knife and sharpen it up uh, so that it cuts, uh, cuts nice, and, nice and easily. Um, this is gonna help you an awful lot and stop an awful lot of uh, uh, bale misses and stuff like that. This is something I do every year to, my, uh, to this baler. Uh, so we want to undo this bolt here um, and then there's a split pin up here that we want to take out um, and then we can, uh, once we take this bolt out here, we can lift the knotter up and get the knife out from in behind it. So this, this bolt here has um, double nuts on it to lock it up so that it doesn't vibrate loose. Now we want to take this split pin out um, and if we lift this up a little bit um, we can just turn the knife a little bit and it makes it easier to get the split this split pin out. Now if we lift this right up, we should be able to wriggle our knife mechanism out of here. Okay, so this is our knife mechanism here. 
Um, and we've got this blade in here. This one still feels pretty good actually uh, from last year. What we want to do is get a stone and we don't want to sharpen the back side, but we just want to take any burrs off it. Um, this is hard steel, so you can't do it very easily with a file on these. So you do need a wet stone or a oil stone or something. Um, and then we want to, to get into this face here and sharpen this side up. Um, some of these have got replaceable blades on. This one's riveted on. Um, the ones with replaceable blades are nice because uh, you can actually put a Stanley knife blade in there. Okay, that's good and sharp now. We can put it back on. Now we just refit this in the reverse direction to the way we pulled it apart. It can be a little tricky to get everything around where you need it to be without making your knife blunt again. Split pin goes back in. And bolt goes back in. The next thing to check is this main gearbox in here. Um, now it's got a grease nipple up the front here, but this is actually full of oil. The filler is up here on top, uh, but to check it, there's a level bung round the back here. Just clean a bit of the dirt off around there before we undo it. And so we want to just see a bit of oil dribbling out of it when we pull the plug out. So we've got that, so that one, that gearbox is ready to go. <clears throat> the other gearbox we check from up the front here. So we open up this cover here. And the level plug for this gearbox is here and the filler is up here. So we'll do the same with this one. The next thing we need to do is go around and grease it. Now there's grease nipples all over this machine. A couple of the important ones. This one here, always do your universal joints because otherwise you will blow them and they're a pain to change. Um, there's one down in here. That one is really important too because that has a fair amount of load on it. Um, and the knotters in here also have a lot of grease nipples on them um, and these are really important to do too. These only turn slowly uh, so you're not going to wear them out in a hurry if you don't grease them but once they're worn out there's a lot of work there to rebuild them so just go through and grease all of them. Uh, I will do that now. Now we also want to check the oil in here. This is the mechanism that sets the bale pressure to and changes your bale weight. So there's a hydraulic ram in here which pushes down on this. The harder you push down on here, the longer it keeps the bale in the chamber for and the more push you need from that end uh, to, to squeeze the bale up. We've got a pressure gauge down here to show us how much pressure we're putting on. Um, 
my hydraulic ram always leaks a little bit. I need to take that off and repair that. Um, but we need to check the oil in here. This is a, I know this is going to be a bit low. So if we look in here, there's a little piece of metal across here. Um, and that's your oil level. Um, this one's down a bit, so I'll put some oil in there in a minute. The other thing that is very easy to forget, in here, um, right in here, there's a little oil cup um, that we need to just get an oil can and put some oil in. I don't know why they put an oil cup here instead of a, a grease nipple, um, but that one's quite important to get a bit of oil onto. Um, I'm also going to go around with the oil can and oil up all the chains before we start. Okay, the rolls of twine go in the back under this cover here. Now, it's got space for four rolls. We use the two centre rolls, one roll for each uh, uh, band on the bale, and then the outside two are the spare rolls. So once this runs out, we've got them tied together. Um, and we just uh, move along. These are the rolls that I am using at the moment. Um, it's an orange baling twine, um, which means you can see it a bit at night at least. Um, and the ends are always taped together like this. So to put our spare one in, we want to, um, we always use it from the centre you can see here, comes from the center outwards. And so we pull that and we want to tie that onto the outside tag on the uh, previous one. Now we're just going to use a standard reef knot um, and we're gonna cut the leading edge very short um, on the, the tail. Um, this just helps it run through the needle a bit better when it comes to the knot. If you don't do that, it can get stuck in the needle and break your twine. Um, so I'm going to tie this up now. I'm going to, I can't do it with the, while I'm holding the camera. Um, and then we're almost ready to go. The last thing I like to do before I head out with any piece of machinery uh, is just to start the tractor, run it at an idle, have a bit of a walk around it and a look at it. Make sure that everything is working properly. Nothing is catching. Everything is turning the way it should, that it sounds the way it should. Balers always make a fair amount of clanking and rattling. But this is a really good moment to pick up any problems that you might have. Okay, so we're going to head off and do some baling now um, and I'll run you through um, driving the tractor and uh, operating the baler while I'm going. Today we're using our Massey Ferguson 178 to pull the hay baler. Um, this is a great little fairly manoeuvrable, pretty economical little tractor, doesn't use too much fuel um, and is ideally is the right, a perfect size for pulling a baler. So we'll jump up now. Okay, so we're gonna, our stop's already pushed in. Um, we're going to, in a minute, push the clutch down, start our tractor. Um, the PTO in and out of gear is down this lever down here. Um, it's already in gear. Um, it has a, uh, a live PTO, so when we push the clutch down, um, the PTO stops. Um, so we'll let the clutch out. We're going to be, uh, once we let the clutch out, the baler will start turning. We'll then br open our throttle up to our taco doesn't actually work at the moment, but if we were go if it did work to that point there, just over um, 1600 revs, about 1700 revs, um, that is the correct speed for running the baler. And I have been going in low range second gear.
there's 443 bales done so that should keep our sheep and cows happy for a little while particularly the cattle um, anyway thanks very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this little video and I hope to see you again next time thanks bye